When you're starting out, every photographer has a dream of making it to the big leagues and buying their first full frame camera. And why wouldn't you? I mean, they're marketed as being, you know, more impressive, they're more expensive, so that must mean like it's better, right? But what if I told you that's not necessarily true? And what marketing companies want you to believe is that full frame is better, but let's talk about APS-Cs and how professional photographers could possibly use them. So today we are here with Lauren, Hi. And we're doing a little shooty shoot with the A7C, a full frame camera, and the A6600, which is an APS-C or a crop sensor camera. So why did we choose these two cameras? Well, out of all the cameras I have access to, one of these cameras came out in 2019 and the other came out in 2020. So only a year apart. They both have 24 megapixel sensors. We're shooting raw. We're gonna be using the same lens on both cameras. Now, why are we using the same lenses? Well, because lenses play a big part in how a photo turns out. So by using the exact same lens on both cameras, we're just removing that part of the equation altogether. So yes, you will notice an apparent change in focal length as we switch from the full frame to a cropped sensor body, but it won't affect the quality at all. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some technical differences between APS-C and full frame, but there isn't anything inherently worse about a crop sensor versus a full frame sensor. What do I mean? Well, let's quickly discuss what full frame and crop sensors are. The term full Full frame sensor comes from the old filmy days where they used actual physical film to record videos. Now with digital cameras, full frame is considered full because the sensor inside the camera is the same one-to-one -one size as traditional film that ran through a camera back in the day. With the modernization of technology and the need to make cheaper and more affordable camera systems, the crop sensor was born. It acted as a more compact, smaller, and thus cheaper to produce version of the full frame sensor. So what is a cropped sensor? Honestly, it's just a physically smaller sensor in your camera. Take a look at this. A full frame sensor measures in at 24 millimeters by 36 millimeters, while the crop sensor of the A6600, for example, is 15.6 millimeters by 23.5 millimeters. They both have 24 megapixels, meaning that they both have the same amount of pixels on the sensor, but the pixels on the full frame are gonna be larger. This is important for a few reasons. For one, the larger pixels on a full frame sensor mean that you can achieve higher dynamic range because the larger receptors are capable of absorbing light more effectively. Higher dynamic range gives you the ability to have greater latitude when shooting and editing your photos with regards to the shadows and highlights in your image. With lower dynamic range, it's much easier to blow out your highlights or lose your shadows forever. Another reason that larger pixels have a leg up is that they may be more capable of absorbing light, thus they must be better in low light. Now, while this is technically true on paper, the sensor itself isn't doing all the heavy lifting when it comes to low light performance. These are digital cameras after all, so you have a computer inside that's processing each and every image. This is why it's important to be comparing cameras that came out at roughly the same time, so that we have comparable tech inside. In my practice, at least, I very rarely see a huge difference in low light performance from crop sensor to full frame for photography. and most notable difference in this sensor size is that it applies a crop factor to whatever you're shooting. So with this full frame A7C and the 35 millimeter lens, it is a true 35 millimeter focal length. But if you put this same lens on the A6600, the crop sensor, it applies a 1.5 crop to whatever full frame lens you're using. Then it becomes a 52.5 millimeter lens as opposed to a 35 millimeter. Despite the apparent change in focal length, there is technically, in air quotes, technically no loss in quality, and I mean, we throw the word quality around to sum up a variety of factors, when the crop sensor applies the 1.5 times crop. But you will be noticing quite the difference in field of view. This changes how you not only compose your images, but also which lenses you end up buying for your kit.
This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Storyblocks doesn't want you to sacrifice your creative vision due to time, budget, or resources. Every creator should have a Storyblocks subscription. Storyblocks is a complete library of 4K and HD footage, After Effects templates, music, sound effects, and so many things to make your creative vision come to life. It's also royalty free, so you can use it for commercial or personal use. There are subscriptions for every budget, so you can choose a plan that's flexible for you so you can get back to creating not worry about your finances. What I love about Storyblocks is that they are committed to including more inclusive and diverse content to help creators tell their unique, individual, and authentic stories. How they're doing that is by hiring creators from marginalized communities to increase representation of the diverse world that we live in. Their unlimited access plan gives you access to over 1 million assets in their library so you can create more, spend less, and just focus on creating. And if you're part of a marketing team or a larger organization, there's the enterprise licensing plan that will allow you to distribute your content and these assets wherever and whenever. If you guys are interested in trying out Storyblocks, visit the link on the screen or in the description box below. And now back to the video. All right, that was a ton of technical talk, but let's answer the core question of this video, which is, can professional photographers use an APS-C cropped sensor camera? And the answer is simply yes. As I mentioned earlier, there's no inherent reason why a crop sensor is inferior to a full frame, and we've established that there's also no loss in quality between the two. I mentioned this in a recent video about composition, but let's not forget that professional photographers aren't always the ones with the most expensive tech, but rather the ones that can tell a story or convey a message effectively through an image. So if I can get away with an APS-C camera, why would I need a full frame? Especially especially when APS-C is typically less expensive than full frame. Well, there's a few reasons why you might make the switch. One reason is form factor. Many photographers opt for a larger body because it allows for a faster workflow. They have tons of buttons and wheels and things that will allow you to access your settings even faster and more easily. A larger body also offers usually more ports, so you can connect to different accessories, whatever you need. That being said, some people prefer for a more portable solution, and typically crop sensor bodies are built smaller. The reason I love my A7C is because it's compact and great to travel with and full frame. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in this regard. Another reason, as we discussed before, is dynamic range. This can be super important for some genres of photography, like astrophotography, some architecture and real estate work, and even landscapes. It's also good for if you're shooting something super run and gun. You'll have much more flexibility in post in case you don't nail your settings perfectly while shooting. The most significant reason people opt for full frame is that full frame cameras offer a higher megapixel count than crop sensors. At the time of recording this video, Sony's top tier crop sensor camera has 24 megapixels, while their top tier full frame camera has 61 megapixels. This is huge for if you're someone who shoots wildlife and often needs to make significant crops to your photos, does large format prints for their work, or if your work is going to end up on a billboard somewhere. Well, you tell me, you've seen a ton of crop sensor photos versus full frame photos. And if you can tell the difference, if you like the full frame photos better, then you know that kind of camera is for you. If you can't tell, then you can't say a crop sensor camera can be ignored, even in the pro conversation. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell. Yay. <laughs> crop, no crop. Crop, you like if you can it? tell, if you can't tell. And this, it's the 90s. What? <laughs> He's gonna run that too, you know? <laughs>